Well guys, I thought I'd start this uh, video off. Uh, here's a new vise in my shop. It's a uh, Charles uh, Parker. Um, gonna mount it here. Uh, just having it set here right for the moment. Um, I've had this vise all oh, since 1975, a uh, Wilton shop vise. And uh, it's hard to take something away that you've used for so long, even though it's not the greatest quality. But uh, it's going to get, uh, I think, replaced. And then uh, this is my uh, main vise on my workbench in the main shop, which is a Charles Parker also. So the blue one, the new one, is the uh, new uh, little cousin for it. So that was pretty cool. We went to a couple of machinery dealer places, and uh, that's what I ended up purchasing. Um, uh, truthfully, my buddy ended up picking it up for 50 bucks, and I said, geez, I would have bought it for that. And he goes, here, it's yours. You pay me the 50 bucks. He goes, just don't put it on eBay. So happy about that. Uh, the other thing that I uh, picked up at the, um, at the machinery dealer was uh, some uh, dovetail cutters at five bucks a piece. Uh, there was, I think I picked up uh, four of them. So one of those I had. I know this little guy I didn't. And then the other thing I picked up at uh, five bucks a piece were uh, keyway cutters. Um, he had a box of them and uh, it was a good buy. Uh, some fairly large ones. Um, so I, I spent uh, 80 bucks I think it was 80 bucks. Yeah, 80 bucks on uh, on the cutters, uh, five bucks a piece. So that was a good buy. And then uh, my quick uh, little flea market uh, go the other day at uh, on Thursday, uh, I picked up a tripod for it was eight dollar day for me. Picked up a tripod for eight dollars, and then I picked up uh, two rigid uh, strap wrenches, a number two and a number one for uh, eight bucks a piece. Uh, real happy with those. I know they'll come in handy. Just need them in the box. Same thing with all the, the keyway cutters and the uh, dovetail cutters. Um, you know, if they're there and they get used, it'll be great. Uh, otherwise, they just may sit there for some time. One other quick report. Um, you can see there's uh, quite a bit of shavings here on the drill press and uh, quite a bit of shavings over here on the uh, on the lathe, um, helping out a buddy. Um, we were drilling bolts for three hours the other day. He's putting together a uh, railing system out of stainless wire, and we had to center drill all the bolts for his mounting setup. So he was uh, at the drill press for three hours, and I was at the lathe for three hours. He was drilling uh, uh, bolts that were CAD plated brass, about two and a half inches long, and I was drilling. Uh, stainless steel bolts um, and uh, ran into a couple little troubles uh, doing it and uh, also blew through about uh, I don't know half dozen 960 force drill bits uh, so they'll be uh, all need to be sharpened okay um, let me uh, shut off the camera and I will be right back with you uh, we need to talk about uh, this guy right here the power draw bar okay be right back Hey guys, it's Chuck. Uh, welcome back to my shop. And uh, this is a uh, kind of a lead in, into the video. I uh, posted a video um, Saturday night, oh, about 11.30 at night. Real excited. I would finished the uh, power draw bar installation and uh, it worked really good. I was happy with everything that was completed. Well, and I posted the video and then Sunday morning uh, it probably already had about 160 views, 200 views. But in, while the views were going on, I was out in the shop playing with the draw bar. And it uh, turned out that uh, my install was not successful um, in the sense of making the mill happy. Uh, the draw bar function worked great. Um, you, you're going to see in the video. Um, in, in, it worked fantastic, but the, the, the actual back gear mechanism wasn't happy. And what was occurring is, is the cam ring that turns, which you'll see in the video, the cam ring that turns pulls on two dogs to raise up and down the gear mechanism. Well, 
with the vibration of the um, impact, it was rattling the dogs in the setup that the dogs are attached to. And, and those were not happy inside there. Um, and the more I played with it, the more I realized that uh, it wasn't a good setup and um, my brainstorm wasn't the brightest thing ever. So the uh, drawbar will be now mounted on, on legs, um, some sort of stand. That, that that's the way they're typically done on step pulley heads. I thought I had figured out a better way, but um, now I know why nobody else has done it that way. So anyway, um, if you'd like, watch the video, um, and it's a what not to do video. Um, there is some machining in there I did and discussion, um, so it might be enjoyable. And uh, there is also a little communication uh, in there for you um, that I think you guys will enjoy. Um, so anyway, uh, this setup does not work, um, or it's, I don't recommend it. It works, but I do not recommend it for... Um, the uh, lively liveliness of the mill itself. Okay, hope you enjoy. Thanks. guys, Chuck, and uh, welcome back to my shop. Uh, thank you for coming by. And uh, as you can see, I got a little summer hat here on today. It's uh, San Francisco Bay Area. It's, uh, I think it was 80 degrees today. The Giants had their opening game today and beat the Diamondbacks. Beautiful day. Um, as you can see, short sleeve shirt, got shorts on. Uh, nice day in the Bay Area. So anyway, this is, uh, this is part two of the uh, power draw bar. And um, I got some really good comments back, and uh, I was uh, kidding some of the uh, guys that uh, made comments that, uh, what the hell, you didn't attend the uh, design review meeting, and uh, you're late. Well, uh, I'm really appreciative of some of the comments that came back, and as if you recall from the original uh, uh, part one, I showed how I was going to drill and tap the top of the mechanism that puts the uh, mill in back gear. And some fellas, and I'm going to list their names, their, their uh, call outs on YouTube. Some fellas wrote in with the idea of not doing that and using a more of a clamp method around the part and uh, so the other day I'm driving to work and it's about a 20 minute drive for me on the freeway in the morning and I was thinking about the comments and it dawned on me uh, I think they have a lot of merit here um, and simplicity at the same time so um, I've uh, I, I fooled around and I'll show you a drawing I did a little drawing just to kind of get it straight in my head and um, uh, I'll move you on here with uh, where I'm at right now. Um, so that day I'm driving in the car and I'm thinking, well, geez, I need material uh, to build this ring. And uh, there's two places that are within uh, 10 minutes of my job site where I'm building some homes. So I stopped at the first place and they didn't sell any type of tubing, aluminum tubing, to use as a ring. Uh, so I ended up, I bought just a, uh, oh, it's about a four inch piece of uh, aluminum stock, round stock. And I left there and I thought, well, geez, I think the other, the other supplier, I've been over there and looked through all their stuff. I think they have tubing. So I went over there and sure enough, they had tubing in a bin. And I sat through the tape, measured and measured and thought and measured and thought. But I had no idea of what the measurement I needed. Um, I was trying to do it off of memory and, well, as luck has it, I bought some tubing also, and uh, I, I aired on both purchases. Uh, Ten bucks at each place, so uh, not the world's end, and got some material. So I come home, and, and, and uh, once I measure the uh, bottom of the drawbar, which is, which, is right, which is right here, 
and we're going to end up putting a ring here and, and uh, we're going to attach a ring to the bottom of this and then go ahead and clamp, uh, have set screws that go through that ring. Well, when I measured this, it's five inches and I thought about it and I said, crap, I got a whole drawer full of aluminum, aluminum discs. And so sure enough, I open it up and they go anywhere from five inches plus up to 14 inches. So uh, that's what I'm going to do is uh, pull off and use one of those discs. So I've already moved a little bit ahead in the uh, rotary table and uh, I'm going to pick up the camera and uh, we'll go over and take a look at where I'm at right now. Actually, just for, uh, for my camera purposes, I'm going to shut off and come right back. Well, just for, just for fun, I got a drawer here in the, in the Lista cabinet that you can see is just full, full of aluminum. And uh, I should have went shopping here first, but uh, I'm an impatient fella and I get something in my head and I, I got to go. So uh, anyway, coming back over to the machine room, uh, here's the two pieces of uh, tubing that I bought. I mean, one, one's a piece of tubing and one was a, uh, a slug, but both of them were the wrong diameter. Um, so we'll come over here, show you the drawing real quick. Um, so basically the, the plate, the bottom of the uh, drawbar plate is just uh, thou under five inches and the uh, diameter, the diameter of this piece right here, the outside diameter, is where we're going to go ahead and pinch on rather than tapping down into it. So that diameter is uh, the 4 inch 450. So it gives me a wall thickness of 0.274 and uh, that's where we'll be uh, that's where we'll be uh, penetrating through. And then I also did my tooling offsets using a quarter inch end mill. So, uh, and then the total, the total thickness of this ring that I'm making will be uh, 335. And you can see there's where the screws will go in from the side and then there'll be attachment screws to uh, come down. The, the draw bar has uh, three quarter inch holes and if those lay out okay, I'll end up using them or I'll end up re-drilling the plate and just clocking it different. Um, so the plate that I had, I set it up in, in, on the rotary table here. Um, and the diameter of the plate's too, too large. Um, and so what I've done is I've, I've put a uh, point in the, uh, in the mill and I went ahead and scribed uh, about 60 thousandths larger than the five inches that's, uh, that I need to uh, cut to. And so uh, what I did is I ended up uh, hold, uh, I ended up lining up the, the rotary table and it happens to have a five eighths pin that has a quarter inch uh, hole in it. So I'm using a hold down on it and I don't know if it's uh, going to be sufficient or enough. I ended up putting these hold downs on uh, uh, prior to pulling down on the center of it so that it wouldn't shift. I used a, uh, a uh, where is it, here it is, I used a 5 8 gauge pin in, the, in, the, uh, in a collet to line up the, uh, the actual bore and, uh, and got it uh, set up. So anyway, back to what I was getting at here. So rather than try to whack off all that uh, material with the, uh, an end mill, uh, I went ahead and scribed it and I'm going to take it over to the bandsaw, cut it, get it close, come back, I'm going to do the exterior down to five inches and then I'll go in and uh, use an end mill and clean out the inside and uh, make my ring and uh, I'll bring you back uh, somewhere in this process here. Okay, uh, I think that covers everything for the moment. So I'm going to take this back apart and then uh, take it over to the bandsaw. So just a quick comeback here. So I had taken the plate off the uh, off the rotary table and I did a quick rough bandsaw. And then I have the gauge pin here and there's a 5 8 pin 
holding my pallet on the rotary table and there's a small recess there. So all I have to do is line up the pin in that recess where the plate's locked in and then I'll end up leaving the pin in there, putting these guys back on just to make sure it stays in place, then go ahead and put down, put the center hole down back in. Okay, there's my phone. Be back with you shortly. Hey guys. Well, it's the next day, um, and I almost pulled a great mistake. As uh, you remember, I did my tooling offsets, and uh, I was working on it last night, and a good friend came over, and I stopped for about an hour, and we had some a lot of talk and discussions, and, and he left, and I tried to run back at it and forget all about tooling offsets. So I ended up actually cutting just a, just a fudge underneath uh, my actual dimension I needed. It'll work. So what I've done is I've clamped, got it, got it sitting on the plate well, got it clamped here, and I've gone ahead and center punched these holes with a transfer punch. So I have these three mounting holes, and so I'm going to pull it back apart and then see if uh, that, that uh, I only got 274 is my dimension I'm shooting for. It's going to be a little tight to get a quarter inch uh, bolt in there. Um, so I'm going to play with that and see see where I'm at. So I'll be back to you here uh, real shortly. Well, I thought I would show you. There's the uh, there's the transfer punch hole, and there's the ring. What'll be the uh, inside diameter of the ring? So the existing uh, holes in the uh, bottom of the draw bar weren't going to work. So on to plan B, and uh, I'm going to end up going with four four attachment uh, positions just go north south east and west on it and uh, that'll be the attachment for the draw bar on top of this plate so the next thing right now why it's back on the rotary table um, before I go ahead and mill the inside portion here to, to create the ring um, this plate is about a half inch and I need to be at uh, 335 uh, so I'll go ahead and, and pull this down to the right uh, dimension for thickness, then go ahead and mill the, uh, mill the ring out, and uh, then we'll move on from there. Okay, be back with you shortly. Just a quick update. So here I'm just uh, taking the, uh, the, the actual ring down to its uh, thickness and just going around on the rotary table. So, bring you back here shortly. Okay, here's another little update short clip. So I'm starting to go ahead and mill out for the actual ring itself. And so I've added a couple toe clamps on the outside so when it does break free, the uh, ring will stay in place. Um, I'm holding off about oh, 10 thousandths from my actual ring diameter and then I'll come and clean it at the, at the end. Um, not really showing the milling because I'm just like an organ grinder here uh, cranking away on this dial. If I had a little monkey in a chain, I could sing some Italian songs for you while I do it. But uh, So anyway, be back with you. It's uh, moving along. Okay, here's another quick update. The center hub is cut out. So now I just have the ring and then I'll clean up the, uh, the idea of the ring right now. Take it to its final dimension. Well, here I've, uh, I'm just doing a little detail work. I've already chamfered the inside, and I've chamfered part of the outside of the ring, and I just moved my clamps over so that I can uh, chamfer the rest of the rest of the ring. So I'll be back with you. Can't do this uh, one-handed. Okay, I'm going to take the ring off, and just in case I booted it on the inside diameter, which I don't think I did, but I'm good for that. Uh, I've just put on these two stops, so that once I release it, I can bring it back and put it back onto the rotary table if I need to. Um, but uh, I'm thinking I'm not going to have to. So we'll see. Bring you back.
Okay, here's a little update. Uh, the ring fit. Uh, it was tight. Um, I didn't take into account to the beatings on the top of that piece from uh, the years of getting hammered, but you know, taking out in, in and out with the hammer. But uh, it fits well, and uh, I was uh, laying out some uh, some. You know, I want I want basically the front of the ring uh, on this this uh, attachment bolt for the cover. Um, I was looking at there is one of my attachment screws that would go in with the set screw here. Um, and then uh, something that I didn't notice, but you can see here the brake lever actually hits the uh, ring that I just installed. So I marked it um, with, uh, you can see it there, wherever it is. There it is over there. So I'll have to relieve that edge um, so that the brake can actuate. But that's, uh, that's not a big deal. That's pretty simple. So um, I can't do this uh, one-handed, but uh, I'm going to give it a trial run before I go any further. Um, like I said, I did do trial runs earlier, but uh, we're going to give it a go. Be right back. Okay, here we go. Trial, trial run one. Let's see if I can get my uh, countersink out of there. Well, that worked good. Ha! All right. On camera, I got screwed again. I will be back. Okay, whoever was laughing at that, I hope you didn't choke. Yeah, I told you my wife was holding it down. She must be really strong. Anyway, the torque was that way, so I put a clamp on the back side. So here goes take two. Hey, baby. Let's put it back in. Oh, yeah. Looks like it's working good. There's my my, my uh, countersink. Find the hole. In like Flint. Oh, baby. Okay. We'll keep on moving on. Hey, and any of you guys laughing? Ha <laughs> ha. All right. Be back. Okay. Before I take this thing down, the, the last thing I need to do now, I think I mentioned this, but drill my set screws on on the uh, ring itself to tighten it to the top of the mill and then uh, go ahead and bolt the uh, draw bar down to my ring. Um, so all that will be done in the uh, in the vise. Okay, so I'll bring you back uh, when it's uh, there and oh the other thing I have to do is go ahead and uh, bolt the uh, bolt the air valve there onto the side of the mill and, and then run my final air hoses. Anyway, it's getting there. Be back. Okay, my battery's almost dead, so this will be the last of it for this evening. But you can see I've got the relief cut into it, and now the brake doesn't hit it. Uh, so it's in good shape. And thank God I put those uh, two stops, these guys on. Uh, made it real simple to just take that ring off and on. And it's been off and on the uh, table there a couple times getting it to fit. Okay, see you guys shortly. Hopefully the next shot might be uh, close to finish. Okay, here I'm uh, drilling and tapping for uh, 1032, 1032 set screws that'll uh, be used to bind the ring to the top of the mill. This is the last one, so I thought I'd show it real quick. Some of Mr. Pete's uh, aluminum cutting fluid that he really likes. I just happened to get it for free the other day.
Okay, so the three holes, the perimeter holes, are in the ring to uh, hold it down. And now the only thing left is to do the attachment of the uh, draw bar to the top of this ring. I'll bring you back when I got that. I put the ring back on the uh, rotary table and now I'm drilling the, uh, the holes so that I can uh, tap. Um, there's no specific layout for this. I put the camera in the way here so that's why it's slowly coming down. But uh, I laid out the bolts uh, in a pattern that just works. Let the mill handle come back and hit the camera. All right, be back with the air shortly. Well, here's an update. Uh, the ring is drilled and tapped, um, and I uh, put it back on top or underneath the draw bar, whichever way you want to look at it, and I uh, used a transfer punch and transferred the holes. Um, and now I'm going to drill clearance holes for the uh, 1032 screws. And once this is completed, it's uh, ready to mount it and uh, give it a try. So I'll be back with you here shortly. This was the setup I ended up putting it in an angle plate there so I could hold it. Okay guys, it's all mounted. The uh, clamping ring is installed with the set screws that are on it. And then I attached it with uh, four 1032 cap screws from the top. Um, and uh, we will give it a try here. Um, betting on it's going to work okay. Um, the air valve itself, I'm going to not mount it yet. Um, I'm going to play around with where I'm going to end up. I want to use it a little bit before I go ahead and drill and, and put it in one place. Uh, at least that's my plan for right now. But uh, let me put you on the stand and we'll give it a try.
Okay, one more shot. We got the uh, cover on it now. And see if it muffles it much. Be interesting to see. No, it doesn't change the sound much. But it's working good. I'm excited. And uh, I got a uh, little communication for you here at the end. So hang on. trip and come into the camera. I guess I'm in frame here. So another uh, little communication uh, discussion or story. Um, there was a, a steel worker and uh, he showed up at the job that morning and the foreman came up to him and said, uh, hey I have to tell you your apprentice isn't here today and you have a new apprentice. Uh, she's right here. And he goes, she's right here. And he goes, yeah you have a you have this girl over here, she's going to be your apprentice. He looks over and he's just going, this, this is ridiculous. Uh, he's pissed, just totally pissed. Anyway, they get their day started and they're down below the structure and the uh, steel worker looked at his, her, his apprentice, her, and said, look, I'm going to be up there, up on top there, about eight stories up. He goes, and I'm going to come over and if I need something, I'm going to signal to you. I'm going to come over to the edge, I'm going to signal to you. When I signal to you, you signal back to me. And then I'll sign down what I need. You put it on the tagline, we'll run it up the side of the building. She goes, fine. And off he storms to the, to the, to the elevator to get up to the floor. Pull away up, he's stewing. And he's just pissed. This is just ridiculous. I got a woman down there for an apprentice. Well, he gets up there, he starts spreading his tools out. Sure enough, he, didn't, he forgot his hammer. Couldn't find his hammer. So he walks to the edge of the structure. He looks down, waves, looking around. He waves again, and then he sees her, and she's waving up at him. He goes, great. So he waves again. She waves up. He looks down at her, and he goes, I need my hammer. And he looks down at her, and she looks up at him, and she goes, she signals to him. Well, the guy sees that and he goes, what the hell, what the hell is that? He's just living. So he turns around he looks again and he goes, I need my hammer. And she looks back at him, kind of shakes her head and motions back up. Oh, he's, oh my God, the guy's going berserk now. And so he's, he's about ready to run down and he goes, I'll try one more time. And he goes, I need my hammer. She looks up at him, just goes, gives him another sign. Oh, the guy goes crazy, just crazy. Runs to the elevator, runs down there, and he says, look. He says, you stupid broad. He goes, what don't you understand? He says, I told you, I need my hammer. And she goes, I told you, I signaled to you three times. He says, I left it in your box. You dumbass. Okay, that's the communication for the day. Hope you enjoyed. Well, I was just closing up and shutting off my lights and everything. And I looked at the two attachment screws here for the uh, speed control here. And I said, boy, it looks just like it's the same on center as that bracket. And sure enough, it is bolts right onto the side of that cover. I think somebody had designed it to do that. Um, so there's where the air switch is going to go and don't have to uh, drill any holes and it's just at a nice height also. So now it's done done. Uh, no it's not done done. I just have to finish up my air. I bought a regulator and things to uh, and some hose to uh, finish that up. But Done, done.